So this is the first section where I will let you use calculators. You will only be allowed to use a basic four function calculator. Okay? So something like this. Although I'm not advocating for you guys going to Staples or anything, it's just one that I happen to have and someone gave me for free. So um, it, this is the only thing that you will be allowed to have on the test, but keep in mind that your test will be in two parts. One part where you can use the calculator and the other part you can't. So are you prepared? That means I see some of you have some scientific calculators. If you have some other buttons on there like with parentheses and you see where it says sine and cosine and other weird things on there, you won't be able to use those, nor will you be able to use graphing calculators. If you are unsure if your calculator is acceptable, talk to me. We'll figure this out. So in this section, we're talking about some geometry applications. We're going to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. We're going to talk about square roots. We first want to talk about square roots. So I'll give you guys the same kind of definition that I would give my 0310 students. Okay. The number A the number A is called a square root of B if A squared equals B. The number A is called a square root of B if when you square that number you get B. Uh, for example, we would say that 5 and negative 5 are both square roots of 25. 5 and negative 5 are square roots of 25. Why is that? Well, if I were to take 5 and I square that, what do you get? You get 25. If I were to take negative 5 and square that, what do you get? Don't you still get 25? Because when you square this guy, what does it really mean to square negative 5? That means negative 5 times ne negative 5. So negative times negative is positive. Okay? So that's what it means to be a square root. Now if I ask you for the square root, then I will use this symbol right here. This is the symbol for the square root. Now, more specifically, this is what we call the um, the principal or the positive square root. So that's the symbol that I use for that. Please understand, this is not division. I've seen too many students use the square root symbol to do division. And I don't know who taught you that, but I will tell you right now that that person was wrong. You can quote me on that, and you've got the video evidence that I'm telling you that this does not mean division. And whoever taught you that is wrong. Now, I use this symbol for finding the positive or the principal square root. So if I were to say this, this says the square root of 25. That means what would you square to get 25? And what would you guys say? You guys would say 5. And you may say, wait a minute, I thought negative 5 squared would equal 25. That is true, but when I use this symbol right here, this means just the positive square root. If I were to just say using words, what are the square roots of 25, you would say 5 and negative 5. But when I use this symbol here, what is the square root of 25? Positive 5. Just like if I were to say, what is the square root of 49? When I answer this question, my thought needs to be this. What squared is equal to 49, or what times itself equals 49? And what would you say? Seven. You would just say 7, right? So the answer is just 7. It's nothing more than that. I have a question. Sure. When we write our answer, do we have the right? Seven squared or just seven? You can't write seven squared. The square root of 49 is just seven. Because um, if you say the square root of 49 is seven squared, 
Seven squared is 49, so you're saying the square root of 49 is 49. Well, then what did the square root symbol do? So if I say the square root of 16, what is that? We should know that that is just 4. Because what did you square to get 16? 4. What if I put a negative out front like this? I say negative the square root of 100. What would you say that is? 10? Almost. If I have this, you would say 10, right? But if I have a negative outside, that would actually mean negative 10. Because what's the square root of 100? The square root of 100 is 10. But if I multiply that times the negative that's out in front, it would be negative 10. What do you think? You, you, I, I, I would have to, s I, I cannot agree that it's kind of like dividing, because what are you dividing by? But how did you know 7 went into 49? What tells you that it's 7 goes into 49? And if you were going to say, this is division here, what are you dividing by? 4? But that square root symbol doesn't tell you that you're dividing by 4. That's not what the square root symbol means. And in order for you to think that I'm dividing by 4 to get 4, that means you already have some knowledge about 4 squared equaling 16. And it's all about this, it being a square. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Now, in 0310, we will look at how there is some division associated with this, but that's when you look at it in terms of exponents. What makes the what? Because up there with the negatives, it gets rid of it. Because the negative times the negative. Right. You were, so the question is, up here, if I square a negative, it becomes a positive. <coughs> that is correct. This is about the order of operations, though. Order of operations here would say, this guy gets done first. And what's the square root of 100? 10. And then you apply negative to that. You're not squaring a negative. It's just a negative or the opposite of the square root of 100. So the opposite of the square root of 100, so the opposite of 10, is negative 10. Now you've got to be careful, though. Oh, that sounded interesting. What's little case? This is my girl. She's checking in on me. Dear honeybee, I'm in class right now. I'll come back to you later. <laughs> hey, don't be jealous that I've been chatting online with babes all day. <laughs> Your mom goes to college. That, one, that one's for you. So what's the square root of negative 36? So you have to be thinking about this guy right here. What squared would equal negative 36? Six? So you're telling me that six squared equals negative 36. Six times six is negative 36. Oh, negative six. So negative, so you're telling me, telling me that negative six times negative six is negative 36. But, but, but squaring doesn't let you change. Squaring means you multiply the number times itself. So what number times itself gives you negative 36? Well, there's a problem with this. This is a non-real answer. We can't do this right now. In 0310, at the, almost at the very end of 0310, we'll talk about this, but right now we can't. So be very careful. We're not going to say undefined. We're just going to say this is a non-real answer. Will it change when we get further in? When we get, 
further down the rabbit hole, so to speak, we will look at, well, it's not going to be a real answer, so we start talking about imaginary numbers and the imaginary unit. And then there are a lot of applications that we can do with complex numbers, which incorporates the imaginary numbers into it. But that's for another video.